Alrighty folks, this is Lurch from Ireland Gaming and welcome back to another episode of From the Depths. This is part two of my coastal defence platforms and today we're going to be building a couple of guns. We have the cannons already built that you might have seen in the last episode and now we're going to put them into a usable coastal defence platform that we can pop down anywhere. Now I said in the last video that I would uh, make a second turret as well using, you know, a missile variant, but I've actually had a better idea. Another thing that works very well with the resource overhaul thing is floating turrets. Things that are on a docking clamp and float above or beside or wherever the, uh, the thing that they're attached to. And I've had an idea that will work very well and make some use of the little wasted space that's in the Hydra turret that I showed you in the last episode. So, without further ado, we will get on with building the Hydra turret. And then we'll move on to doing the missile defense addition afterwards. I've got another couple of interesting ideas for that too. So let's carry on. Okay, this looks like about as good a place as any to put the first turret down. And this is just sort of a, a stable sort of platform I can build off. Uh, let's get it started here. Hooray, it worked. Okay, so what we want in this thing, and I'm going to speedy up pretty much all of the build, but for now, we're gonna start talking about what we're actually gonna do. So. I'm only going to have minimal ammo, ammo barrels. Um, I want to build within one kilometer of the resource hub, and you can just about see the thing over there. We checked out in the last episode that we have a pile of room for actually showing everything off. Um, so, or for building stuff around the area. So we have uh, pretty much this whole island to use. On the actual turret itself, we're going to need a shell customizer, the cannon itself, which I've already prefabbed. I've also prefabbed the shell customizers as well that we can drop down wherever we need. And they're pretty big, so this is going to have to be a pretty big defense platform, much, much bigger than the other one. But it's also going to have an awful lot more firepower. Uh, next, we're going to need a local weapon controller, because I always forget one of those. We'll need batteries. We will need spares, crates, and repair bots. Remember, you have to have the resources on board now if you actually want to repair things. But you can also transfer stuff uh, from spares crates in the resource hub at the center. So we'll just use minimal number of spares crates here and transfer everything we need from the central resource hub. Uh, also, because we're going to be using floating turrets, I'm going to put a couple of repair tentacles on as well. And that should give them a nice little sort of symbiotic relationship and help each other out. So let's get building the actual turret. And I'm going to start with the usual box and work from there. So, speedy up at time. Okay, so that's pretty much everything in, except for the repair tentacles and the spare crates and stuff like that, but they could be plunked in anywhere. I just wanted to get everything laid down. Now, this is actually a really high profile compared to what I wanted it to be. It's, uh, I'll probably actually pull these inwards a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to move these closer together so that they don't, uh, don't take up quite so much space. I can pull the profile down. We don't need all this room, so yeah. I'm going to do that, but... 
the reason I brought you back was to talk about the configuration of this ship um, so that it can actually accept localized resources from the other thing. Uh, now, as you might have seen in my pre one of my previous videos about the localized resources, how you set this up is you can go to the E view, which I find is actually a really the easiest way to do this. You can also do this from the map view, but you have to use the R menu to get all of these up. But like I say, I'm going to show this off in the E view because it's much easier to do because you can select units as a group like this. And you want to set them all into the same resource group. It can be one, it can be five, it doesn't matter. But I only want these in one. Why is that set to two? Okay, that's weird. Oh, you have to set them all to zero again. Okay, you can use that as a buffer. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize things could be part of more than one resource group. That's potentially useful in some cases. Now, one thing I did forget to add to this is ammo barrels, and I will add them on in a bit. I don't need very many, thankfully, because of the, well, this guy providing everything that I need. But as you see, you can select everything and just select join group to the first supply group and they'll be able to share resources between each other. That's basically it. That means that these batteries will be charging up now. Yep, they're all full and we should have plenty of power. So this has got 360 power creatable and this one, other one should have 360 creatable as well at a reasonably good efficiency rate. So it kind of helps add a little bit, you know, get some power onto this thing. It's only like 700 power. It's very, very little. I could probably do with just an engine on this, but then I'd have to put explodey fuel on. And there's enough explodey things on here already. So next up is to add ammo barrels, which is important. I think I'll put them probably right at the back here, quite far back from this in its own little box. And I'm going to move these guys in a little bit and then, well, box the whole thing off and make it pretty. So, on with the show. Okay, so we're getting there. It's pretty much just some more slopey bits and a lick of paint. So, oh yeah, I have to add shields too and work out exactly just how much power I have available. Uh, I should have a fair bit. Up this down to efficiency again. So I've got about 360 power times two, so it's about 700 power to play with. I should be able to get quite a few shields on with that. I guess I remember that the shields are now a lot more expensive, so we have to be a little bit more careful with them, but I should be able to uh, put a, like a bunch of strength 3 or strength 5 shields on here and actually really, really help the defense a bit. So I'm going to cut here and carry on and do some shaping and painting and stuff like that. So BRB. And we're done. At least nearly done. This is the Hydra Defense Platform completed. We have everything inputted that we want, and because we have that docking clamp in the middle, we can carry on and build the next part of this project. Now I'm gonna add a floating missile platform above this cannon, and they're gonna actually help each other out because I have spares crates and repair tentacles on them. 
and remember I was saying, you know, this is a... I may just wait for this one because I'm splitting the videos up. I'm actually going to um, do even more videos on this coastal defence thing in the future because I've had a whole bunch more ideas for how you can <laughs> really power this up, especially using this docking system that I'm going to show you now. But this is the Hydro Defence and there are a ton of shields on it. Uh, you can't see them now because I've got an ACB turning them all off again, but let's get something in. The Calamari shouldn't cause too many troubles. Boom! Those lovely tracers. And you see all of its shields have turned on nicely for us here. Sweet. I'm thinking I might have to add one on the side here as well, just because things are going to possibly be attacking from that angle as well. This thing's quite far out from the shore. But yeah, it's a, it's a start, and that should really help things, uh, keep things off the turret and improve the survivability. There are so many shields on this now, it's really cool. But yeah, uh, I think it's time to move on to the next part of the project, which will sort of complete this thing in a, in a hole. <laughs> you can see that, making massive holes there. I'll do a little montage of these at the very, very end, whenever I get these, uh, the next turret added on and the whole thing is a completed object. So I'll BRB and start building the next part of the project. Okay so let's build a teeny tiny little missile bay that we can mount above the turret, that lovely docking clamp, and uh, have a little bit of a helping hand on uh, our little coastal defence platforms. I'm not going to make these terribly long range missiles, I'll say... I'll make them maybe slow burners with so you get the launch pads on here. Slow burn missiles with, I think, laser. Yeah, we'll go laser. And I'll put a laser targeter on the end there, because I'm going to extend the launch bays out here. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking now, and onwards. Alright, there we have it, a very quick paint job, and we have a working turret to add on to the top of the other one. I'll just mount it up here quickly for you. Let's go into the inside and let's find the docking clamp in this guy. And Q, we'll select our vehicle. I'll save it a second. And we want to get it up and hold 25. And because this is mounted vertically, we want to change our hold elevation. I think 90 is the right one. Yeek! Um. You're not supposed to do that, dude. Well done. Managed to break everything. Frick's sake. Um. <laughs> okay. Well, at least the repair thing's working. How on earth did that break it? Um. No blast. I'll be right back when I get this working. <laughs> Alright, so I finally got it working. I discovered the problem was I had built it 90 degrees out of place. I'm sure some of you guys already noticed that. I'm a tool. But I loaded it, or saved it, loaded it in and rotated it uh, 90 degrees three times and it's now pointing in the correct direction. I'm not sure if that's why it crashed into the other one whenever I started, but it is now in place and we now have a floating little missile tower. Now, the beauty of this whole thing is because this is inside the turret. And the turret's going to be turning to our targets. Well, the missile launcher is also going to turn to our targets. So let's get a Sea Viper in. And you see the missile on the top is starting to rotate. And everything's good! How cool is that? So I'm going to get this guy painted up for you guys quickly. And that will more or less do it for this episode. So yeah, I'm going to paint this up and I'll be right back and uh, we'll start spamming a couple of these things down and do a little montage thing. I think... No, screw it, right. I'm not going to come back before I paint the stuff. I'm just going to wrap the episode up here and I will paint it 
and then we'll do the montage. So, I really hope you enjoyed the episode. Any likes, subs or comments are really, really awesome. I love hearing from you guys and I'll read every single comment. As always, take it handy and have a bloody good day.